Andrew, what you doing, brother? Just getting prepped for the next segment, buddy. Awesome, my friend. Listen, you know, one of the main questions, I'm sure you get this, and one of the main questions that we get a lot is, you know, where do we get our inspiration? Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit. You know, I'd love for you to just share, where do you get your inspiration? Where do you get that little sense of, like, kind of little push? You know, I always feel like it's tough, and, and I go through periods of being so inspired, and then I go through times where I feel like nothing inspires me. <laughs> so there's a couple places I tend to go. Honestly, fishing really? is a place that I go, and well, a lot of it's because it gets my mind into a different place. We're on the same boat there. Fishing is a really nice, peaceful time, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, the lakes and the trees and the valleys and mountains and everything that surround me while I'm in Utah fishing, it, that's a lot of what inspires me. So are you talking about inspires you being having a, pe a peaceful mindset? Because what does that have to do with hair? Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of times we get wrapped up in our day to day in the salon. It's get clients in, get them out, sell product, do this, do that. And it, it gets very business feeling and we get tired and we get stressed out, right? Awesome. So I really think that uh, what's important for our viewers to understand is that inspiration is not only just inspiration about hair itself. Right. You know, a lot of people tend to think like going to hair magazines and getting their inspiration. I really like what you're, what you're saying here is about calming your mindset down. Mm -hmm. Really can set up your inspiration. Yeah. What about websites? Any particular websites that you love to, mm -hmm. to visit? And the reason I ask you is because technology nowadays, I mean, we can access just about anything or Google anything that we want to get in terms of research. So yep. what about websites? Any particular websites that you take a look at? So the couple that I go to really frequently, of course, ours, you know, because yes. a lot of times I'm learning from even your older DVDs and videos that are, that are on the website or through our YouTube channel. I learn a lot from those. Awesome. Um, a lot of the places I've, I love too is, I love Hairbrained. It's hairbrained.me, I believe. Um, I love the hair nerds. It's these ladies, and they've been traveling all over the United States just filling their website with information about great hairdressers. There's Salon Galaxy, mm -hmm. there's the Modern Salon site. I mean, it's kind of limitless. It, everywhere you go, you're going to find fresh information. Yep. I think, you know, some of my favorite is you mentioned Modern Salon, American Salon, mm -hmm. BehindTheChair.com, yes. uh, Redkin.com. I think a lot of education on demand. I mean, there's so much education, so much inspiration out there. Mm -hmm. What about fashion? Does fashion have a sense of, because you've got a great sense of style. Thank Andrew. you. So what about fashion? Do you take a look at fashion? Does that kind of give you a sense of inspiration? Yeah. Uh, I like magazines like Nylon mm, love or nylon. Uh, Zinc. Yes, love Zinc. Because mm -hmm. I feel like they're pushing the creative edge. I mean, I, of course, I love Vogue and all of, all of the more traditional style magazines, but I think when you reach outside and you go to some of more of these creative-based magazines, it gets your mind thinking in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And especially when we're looking at creating photo shoots. Right. That's yep. where I really start to look at these less traditional magazines so that we can get fresh inspiration for not just the hair, but even the photographic quality and yep. you know the direction of the textures that we're going to use in the background. What about, I mean, one of the things that I personally love to do is I love Italian Vogue. Yes. I really love Italian Vogue because of the, and, and when you're looking at magazines and you're building a tear sheet and you're looking at tear sheets, what I really recommend that you do is just take these tear sheets, things that you like, and just tear them out. And what I love to do is I love to post them up and use them as wallpaper in my office at home. Mm -hmm. So I really have these visuals. And then I'll take maybe a half a head of something, fold it, and I'll put it over somebody's face and you get this whole different type of combined textures or different types of silhouettes. Yes. So I really believe that magazines are a great key. You mentioned nylon, mm -hmm. zinc, I love Italian Vogue. But really go to magazines and look at the sense of magazines, but get outside of the borders of hair magazines. Yeah. And really start to look at editorial magazines in terms of um, Italian Vogue, Nylon, Zinc, and even look at the consumer magazines. Now, what are you looking at when I look at it? When you look at it, what are you looking at for? I know when I look at these things, I'm looking at silhouettes. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at movement, hair moving back away from the face. You're seeing that in a lot of magazines. Mm -hmm. The silhouette, triangular, square, narrow. What about you? What are you looking at when you look at these magazines? Uh, again, yeah, a lot of it's silhouette because I feel like that's a lot of what we do in hair design is we're creating these silhouettes. So are they fuller and thicker at the bottom? Are they really full here and really skinny at the bottom? You know, what direction are designers going? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I really get inspired by though when I look at fashion is just 
a concept even. It's the feeling and the right. vibe of the photo. Yep. Is it the boho chic? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, is it vampy? Is it really uh, dramatic, more rocker stuff? You know, because when I start to think about theme and feel, a lot of times that inspires the direction for the haircuts too. You know, I think that, you know, we're gonna do some uh, haircutting collections this summer. Yes. And what I'm seeing in fashion is classical mixed with some rock and roll. Absolutely and texture. Right. Matter of fact, we've been talking a lot about that in terms of how you got these two different kind of genres working together. And I think that's what really is really important is to look at things from a different perspective mm -hmm. and kind of, kind of open your eyes a little bit wider than what you normally might. Meaning look at the entire concept of something. Okay, so we've talked about websites. We've talked about the, the, what technology brings to us. We've talked about fashion. You know, I love looking at fashion. I don't mm -hmm. know about you, but every time Fashion Week happens, I immediately go to a, a website called Trendzine.com. Oh, yeah. And I love Trendzine.com. Expensive to be a member, but it's well worth it. Mm -hmm. And I love that because you can get a lot of play on words, key words there. Like, that's actually where I came up with cutouts. You know, when they were cutting out fabrics, pieces of fabrics. And that's where cutouts, these triangles, came from. So it's really looking at all kinds of things, but really, I think the main message that we're trying to deliver here is get yourself out of the hairdressing world mm -hmm. and look at things. What about music? <laughs> I know you, you're a musician, yeah. right? You play bass. I'm a bass player. You're still playing bass? Yes. Awesome, great. So what's music do for you, I'm sure? Come on, tell me. Well, music is all about emotion, right? I mean, if you listen to a symphony versus a jazz trio versus, you know, heavy metal, <laughs> you know, it brings us these different emotions. And like I said, you know, even when I'm looking at fashion magazines, it's not always just about a design, it's about what's the feeling that it creates. Yep. And I tell you what, man, if I get a doll head, I get into my living room, crank some the tunes, music, yep. and I put it on random. I don't even go for one genre, I put it on random. And what happens in front of me is a lot of times inspired by the change in the mood and mm -hmm. the different things just that my iPad is going off in different directions. What about the concept and the idea of doing a hair jam? Let's mm. say, for example, one of the things that I used to love to do with my good buddy Chris Barron is we'd get in a hotel room and I'd go in the living room and watch maybe a movie or watch something while he's in the bedroom cutting, but we're set a timer for 10 minutes. And then when the timer goes off, he has to come out of the room, I have to go in with a mannequin, mm -hmm. figure out what he's done and continue the haircut or take it another direction. Yeah. I got 10 minutes and then we kept altering every 10 minutes and we were amazed at some of the things that we would come up with. What about you in terms of doing hair jams or anything like that? What do you do? Well, that's a great idea. I've actually never thought of doing that, just you know, bouncing off of each other and just letting someone else take over where you left off. Um, what we do, a lot of you know at home that I'm a co-owner in Lunatic Fringe Salons, mm -hmm. and a lot of times what we do is we just get some ma mannequins, um, we get some wine if you're into that, and we turn on some music, put some really inspirational DVDs on, and we just start cutting hair together. Awesome. And so I can walk over and my buddy Rafa, he's this really creative mind, and you know I can go over and I'm like, dude, where are you headed with this? Yes. And a lot of times he's like, dude, I don't know, I'm just kind of, I'm just rolling with it, bro, you know? Which is so different than the way I do hair. I'm very much like... You're very technical and methodical. Yeah. yeah. So he inspires me that way. That's awesome. Well, Andrew, I got to tell you, my friend, you do have a great salon in Salt Lake City. Thank you. Because you're up for some Naha Awards. Yes, we are. What are you up for? Uh, we have Salon Team of the Year. Uh, my buddy Jake Thompson, who's the co-owner of my location, he's up for avant-garde. Uh, Jeremy McDougall, who works for me, is up for Newcomer of the Year. Awesome. And then uh, I may be up for Men's Hairstylist of the Year. Great, congratulations. <laughs> well, listen, if you're ever in Salt Lake City, we're really gonna invite you to drop by and take a look at Lunatic Fringe. Mm -hmm. I know your door swings both ways, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely right. <laughs> Stop by, guys. Go in and see Lunatic Fringe. You're gonna love the salon. And most of all, you're gonna admire the work and the team that they have here. So once again, we just wanted to spend a little time and talk to you because I know you always asking, where do we get our inspiration? But most importantly, I'm gonna be so excited now to have somebody that I can bounce off some, some inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I'm so proud to have Andrew Carruthers as the Education Director of the Sanvia brand. Hope you enjoyed this segment. We'll be coming to you with more things. Talk to you soon, my friends. Andrew Carruthers. See you guys.